Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's what they call this hump day. I just want to let y'all uh, listen to me for a minute or two here. I want to show my face in the place. Um, it's early morning. Just getting back from my doctor's appointment. Um, I guess I'm going to get some hot tea there shortly. But I just wanted to share a couple things with you all other than food uh, as I do. I try to let y'all be up on what's going on. I know Tanya has mentioned more than I have about uh, I was going through a little health situation right there. It seemed like uh, I think uh, lately I've gone through quite a few, but I don't like to, you know, but ones that I think will help, and I'll say it, and I'm, I'm away from it. I'm done with it. So this time I want to just share with you, y'all be careful if you have any kind of allergies or if you get a cold or something, or you make your nose itch, be careful how you scratch that nose. Um, the pollen was extremely thick around here this year. See, those dogwood trees, remember I showed y'all the picture of our dogwood trees? Well, those dogwood trees were so full and so thick and so beautiful, so they produced more pollen. And uh, I don't have a garage or a shelter over my car, so the pollen was on my car, and I knew it was on there because my car is black. And I know every time I went out, they was like, "Oh my Lord, get in the car!" And it wasn't even my mind just wasn't even on the fact that when I slammed the door over all these years, that the pollen, you know, and so a couple of times would get in my face. So a couple of times when I slammed the door it actually did get into my face and got into my nose and eyes and I can just remember a few times when I get in the car I always have Kleenex and I, you know, wipe my glasses off and do all this kind of stuff and a couple of particular days I got in and, you know, the pollen blew back in my face and all that and it just got, it was just itching so bad and I just took, you know, you just take your head and back in here and go, I did that a few times. Then uh, by the time I got home, it, you know, I had done, did it a few more times. But I, I never really had that kind of a problem with power, except maybe a few years back, it would itch and all this and I'd take Zyrtec and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, it did that to me a couple of times. And then as, I guess as the irritation progressed, um, it just became itchy and I didn't pick I'm not a picker so I didn't just take my finger and pick I would get some tissue put on it and it just sort of scratched to give myself a little bit of relief and so that was a mistake number two um, so suffice it to say if you get anything going on with that nose be very careful don't of course you know picking nose is uh, the number one thing that you don't do that <laughs> for he said I know grandma ain't pick her nose Bad she used to get it up about picking out when we were little. I said, well, yeah, true. But anyway, um, just be careful with that because what ha ended up happening to me, uh, I ended up with a nasal abscess in each nostril. And if you think that's not painful, uh, debilitating, worrisome, nerve wracking, I mean, there was just a lot of descriptors I can give for that. That was one of the most because it, it not only is it painful because your whole face hurts because when you when it gets inflamed all of this swells and my nose will act to here up to and then up in here and then it got very like a big red knob. I mean the whole ball of wax. I mean it was I was a hot mess. But anyway, uh, I went, the first time I went to my doctor when it started itching pretty bad, my regular doctor, he gave me some stuff to do with it. He didn't even see those nodules that start forming. So then, three days later, I ended up in the emergency room. So they gave me the wax, the whole bottle of wax on it. They, they did the treatment, they did the draining, they did the sticking. I went through it all that night. So it was quite a, um, hmm cumbersome thing to go through. So I'm just saying it to you. Just be careful. Because see, those type of infections are 
for real serious because you know they can go into your areas. So uh, just be careful uh, with that nose area. And I'm doing well now with the doctor. They said that you know everything is healing like it should. And my headache, I know I don't have the headache like I did have. It's just a mild one. I don't have that head. Ooh, something in my eye. Wow. Okay, so he said, um, you know, everything was looking good, and I got to go back in one week to just get cleared out. But I, I went to an ENT doctor this morning. So uh, he's a specialist in that area. So he said everything was healing properly. Just continue to use, you know, use our, of course, my antibiotics and um, to use my um, creams I should. So just wanted to share that little tidbit with y'all because uh, I love you so much and I don't want anything to go. I, I wouldn't want anybody to have to go through that little route that I just finished off. So I'm good and, you know, I've been doing what I do all along, but in moderation, you know. So uh, I feel good. But I just want to share so that if any of you have that situation, and, no, and this here's another thing too. This went on for about 10 days. Now, if somebody had told me yesterday that I was going to be feeling as well as I do today, I would have thought, no. Because I'm telling you, I felt so bad yesterday, I was still sore, I was still swollen. But when I woke up this morning, I mean, it's still there, but the swelling was gone. I'm not that sore. It just wasn't like I thought. Because I had prepared the day. I said, you know what? I'm going to fix something to eat before I leave. So when I get back, I'm just going to get back in the bed. I'm keeping my clothes on. I'm not getting back in the bed today because I feel okay. But know this. It takes time, over a certain time frame, for that medication to get in your system. So I think uh, after about five days, um, it kicked in. And I heard it was just that those headaches was what was getting to me. So, anywho, let's move on to what we're going to cook in here today. Oh, this is my coffee cup. We're gonna, I'm going to have a hot ginger tea. But what I'm going to cook is over here on the stove. It's going to be short and sweet because I had prepared myself to do something that would not require um, any kind of long term in the kitchen. So, what I am preparing here. Let me get the camera back over on the stove, y'all. Hope y'all are having a God-blessed Wednesday. Hope you got something planned. I don't know if you're living in one of those states that is opening back up, but we're praying for you if you are. Okay, there it is. I've got it covered up already. And I'll just tell you, I've already prepared it because I'm telling y'all, I did not think that I was going to be ready to be able to say anything when I got back from my appointment, but praise be to God. Here I am, honey. We just don't know. All right, this is, this chicken is cold. Remember what Easter Sunday, I fixed all that chicken. I made uh, two roasted lemon chickens. Uh, they weren't heavily lemoned, but anyway, I had all this other food, so I, um, I had a whole chicken left over. So, we're going to have some leftover chicken from Easter Sunday. So, what I did was I cut it in quarters. And I'll tell you the, the um, sauce I made to go over it. It's a lemon, butter, and garlic sauce. So, I put uh, one stick of, of uh, Smart Start. I put one-fourth of a cup of lemon juice. You can squeeze your lemons fresh. Or you can do lemon juice. I think I, I use lemon juice because I didn't cut that lemon. Uh, some garlic powder, garlic, onion powder, garlic powder, that Tony Chartres, and also um, Paul Prujon. And I put a little bit of my masala. Just all those different flavors to go in there because that lemon will take over. You know that. So I put that lemon in there. And, oh, and I put a couple of tablespoons of, guess what? creamer, milk, whatever, evaporate, doesn't matter. I put a couple tablespoons in that, and that creamed that sauce up a little bit, and it did just what I wanted to do taste-wise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into the oven for about 30 minutes and let it heat back through and let all that goodness go through it. If you can see it up close, 
it's not a soup juice in there but there's enough in there for it to go through that chicken and bake in and we're gonna have us something good here this will be for lunch and dinner so we're gonna probably do a salad or maybe a potato or something like that but just want to chime in with you to let you know what's going on over here on this side hope you are all well hope nobody's having to go through any illnesses if you are we pray that by his stripes your body is healed in jesus name amen so let's get it going i'm gonna go ahead and get this uh chicken in 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and it should be heated pretty well heated through um you know what i think i'm gonna down i'm, I'm gonna drop that to 325 because it might be still a little bit frozen and i'll probably need to leave it in there a little bit longer how about i put it on 325 for 35 minutes that way it'll be heated all the way through because i like my food hot if i want to have it hot and um yeah i said potatoes and probably a salad to go with it just something like i'm still not gonna be here in this kitchen cooking uh even though i feel uh, like a thousand dollars right now a million dollars whatever anyway hope y'all are getting your 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 have gotten your assistance from uh the government the stimulus package i hope it's all come through for you if not i hope it's on the way if you you know whatever aid or assistance that you were uh, hoping for i'm praying in jesus name that it comes your way soon even today we could the mailman hadn't run this early i don't think but anyway if i sound a little nasal it's because i'm still going through my little deal here so anywho i will be back after the chicken gets ready hey y'all we're back on the stove the chicken is in the oven heating still another few minutes i'm going to make a stir fry to go along with the chicken and that's pretty much what we're going to eat with it i've got some of those pre-frozen uh piped potatoes that i'll probably pot one or two of them and i'm not going to cook rice again today can you believe it i'm not doing rice okay so we're going to go ahead and get this stir fry started the stir fry of the day is going to be red onions asparagus and shredded cabbage so i'm going to start the red onions and the asparagus first let them get going pretty good of course you know i got to throw my seasoning in on them then i'm just going to throw some cabbage on top of it season it up and that stir fry is going to be ready make sure you got that uh all nice and hot so that is a medium red onion and let's see i think i use about 10 stalks of uh asparagus you just chop it all up just that simple i'm gonna hit it with a half a teaspoon of garlic powder so far okay and this is one of my mixtures out of the cabinet that has a little bit of everything in so this is i'm sure y'all got one of those where you put everything every seasoning you got in there but the basic seasoning here is garlic and olive oil so i just add a little bit of that i can't even remember what all i got in here um complete seasoning would serve that purpose y'all okay so this is some minced onion if i can get some okay yeah so, uh, a little bit of mint onion to go in there and of course you know i'm going to use my famous masala um seasoning this don't forget, this stuff here just it's just i just it's, it's just unbelievable i love it on everything i'm gonna put a little just not a lot just a little bit of that on there on top of there and you know from, i haven't put any salt in it we're still watching our salt intake. And the reason I'm putting the cabbage in last is because the cabbage um, will get soft and, and, and cook, you know, before the other veggies. So we have, so the cabbage will be not crunchy, but not real soft and soggy, soggy for the, a stir fry. Okay, so I probably, oh, my Tony Chachers. Give it a little sprinkle, and, and when, when these sprinkles here, these are about half teaspoon sprinkles is all. You know, they just need to be lightly seasoned because that chicken is highly seasoned with that lemon, that pungent uh, lemon flavor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple tablespoons of that 
juice right off that uh, chicken and put it right into the stir fry. Oh yeah, you know I'm all about the flavor, y'all. All about the flavor. I gotta get in the freezer and find those little piped in potato boats. And let's hit this with a little bit of black. Oh, why that thing just flopped around on there like that? Half a teaspoon of one half teaspoon of black pepper. Okay. Whew. Y'all, yeah. I'm telling you now, it's smelling good. You know what? I want me some of that little multicolored, um, some of those little multicolored peppers. Since I got a few in the fridge. I do have a few in the fridge. It's about time to buy some more. I think I got maybe one more usage out of that bag that I purchased. So I'm just going to drop them right in. I think it's about time to drop the cabbage in. Because I don't want everything cooked too, too much. I'm going to put about three cups of uh, the shredded cabbage in there. Should be a plenty. Okay, that's my oven letting me know that um, how I can take that chicken out. Oh, whew. I wish y'all could smell what I'm smelling off this skillet and I'm congested. And I can imagine what it really smells like. Let cancel that up so it'll stop screaming at me. What are y'all doing today? Today is a hump day, as they say. But Wednesday... You know, it's amazing how, now even me, I was, I'm was i retired, of course, y'all know that. And But with this crisis situation, I feel just as much, just as much a part of all this big change as the people who were working simply because my family dynamics changed. And it just put, it just threw me into a whirlwind. And I just feel like, you know, I got to be planning this, that, and third, which I really don't have to plan anything if I don't want to. But it's just, isn't that amazing how, how we assimilate into doing the same thing? It's, it's really, it's really amazing how assimilation comes about in society. And we don't, you know, when you think about assimilation, most people don't like to uh, feel that they assimilate, but we do. So that's one cup. We're going to take it, put it right in there. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of times people don't like to admit assimilation, but we assimilate because I tell you what, I like to think of myself, and I, I'll say it first, I like to think I'm one of these people that, you know, sort of leads the pack, come up with the idea, set the tone, all that kind of stuff, but I can, I can follow, now sure, I can sure follow, but it's amazing how circumstance happenstance, situations, and life will cause you to get to a point where you never thought you'd be. And here we are. We're assimilating into the same routine. Okay, this is my phone. It's my children. I'm sure that I have no doubt in my mind. Okay, there's my other two cups of cabbage. Y'all, uh, excuse me just a minute. Okay, I'm back. I don't know who that was. That was one of those unknown calls again. Because, you know, I told you all, whenever my phone rings, I always try to answer it. You know, I always will give it my attention. Because it may be one of my children or some of a friend or somebody that really needs something. But anyway, as I was saying, you know, I like to think of myself as one of these people who kind of sort of, you know, pretty much tools along and you know I, I I can follow a situation but when it comes to certain things you know I pretty much um, can come up with a way to get it done 
But in this situation, with this crisis we're going through, people, we have assimilated into a melting pot. And that just brings you back to the 90s when we were doing that train about melting pots and assimilation and stuff like that. Um, whew. That was a class I used to teach about diversity, the diversity training class. And we talked about a lot about the melting pot and assimilation and all that kind of stuff and what was going to be happening in, in the year, was it the year 2000 or 2005 or something like that. But anyway, uh, as we were teaching those classes, we did these little illustrations about how people assimilate, you know, what causes people to assimilate. You know, what dictates assimilation? So circumstance certainly does. So we know now we're in a circumstance whereby uh, we don't have a choice but to assimilate. We have to all do what we need to do to get through this crisis. So it's amazing. You know, like this, it's almost makes you think of that never say never. <laughs> so I ain't doing this, I ain't doing that in third. Circumstances come upon you, you get it done. Um, and hopefully we won't look at this whole situation as a negative one. Hopefully we can see, I, you know, and two, one thing that I like to do, of course, I love people and I love praying for people and talking to people and trying to dig the best out of people as well as myself, is to find that silver lining in all of this. We're going to go ahead and start adding that other teaspoon of the seasoning. Check for if we need a little bit of salt. This is my other half a teaspoon of garlic powder. This was a teaspoon of garlic powder. I only put a half. Um, I think I'll put Paul Cook on this time. The other half. I'm only going to put half of that one. Um, but as I was saying, um, life can deal you some uh, hands that you may not necessarily want to do a certain thing. But that circumstance or that happenstance or that situation can get you going in a total other direction. That's why it's not good to get too dug in on what you will or will not do. And then there are some people that do get too dug in. But then one thing about it, if you unless you close your eyes and pass on, you're going to have to do it one way or the other. So I hope that we're not having a, a, a real big struggle, you know, with trying to figure out what, what we're doing, where we're going, how we're going to do it, and how we're going to get through this situation here. So you know what my suggestion is always going to be is to pray about it. I'm going to take me a fork here, and I'm going to taste this cabbage. I haven't put any salt in it. And I got my cabbage just right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. That's good. It's nice and crunchy, too. That cabbage is like I want it. Now, if you want to get any more wilted, it's going to anyway a little bit because it's still heated. If you want a little bit more salt in it, a half a teaspoon of salt will take it where it needs to be. And for this amount of veggies, a half teaspoon is not bad because you look at the sodium count. Or you can not put any at all, okay? Now, let's see. My Himalayan pink salt, oh Lord, that's too small. I got to get my glasses. Oh, child. I almost squinted my eyelashes off. Okay. So. And see, serving size, whew, a fourth of a teaspoon is 
380 milligrams. You know salt, you know what, when you think about that? It's 380 milligrams, okay. So, if I put a half, that's gonna put it up to 760, I believe it is. So, spread out over, uh, we're not gonna use all these today. So we'll say spread out over four meals, because that's gonna make four servings. It's not so bad, because you're gonna do four into that uh, servitor. Probably back to the, maybe two, two, 250, and I think we can have 1500. So, like I said, either way you want to do it, or if you don't want to do it, if you want to season it up some more and not pour um, the salt in it, there's you can place a little bit of uh, soy sauce in it. That will oomph it up a little bit more. And then I think that's what I'm going to do. Either soy sauce or, let me see, my Gold Mountain has a lot of sodium too. Let's see. Gold Mountain. Oh my lord, you won't believe how small this writing is on this thing. Whew! You won't believe. One tablespoon. You know what? I'm going to use the Gold Mountain. It has, it's, it's about the same. But it's for a tablespoon. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, this is a teaspoon. I'm going to go ahead and put one teaspoon. This this will this will give it a little bit of salt content. Yeah. And this will put that, we'll see. And you know what? I can eat it just like this. I'm trying to, to make it tasty for Kareem and at the same time cut back on that salt on his behalf. You know, so. Because I'll tell him before he eats, I said, Kareem, you probably don't need to put salt on that shoe. I already salt him. He'll say, Oh, okay, Grandma. And if it tastes good, I mean, come on. I have to plant that idea with him. Okay, and then the chicken, I mean, it, it has a salt content because y'all saw how I cooked it. So, really, between the two, I think it's going to be all right. But that's a pretty stir fried dish. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop that chicken out of the oven, and this meal is ready, y'all. So, I'm going to trust that it's going to taste okay. And if it was for Kareem, if he wants a little bit more salt content, I'll allow him to add just a little bit more. Other than that, we're done with this dish. I'm crazy. Mm. It's so yummy. So, we, like I said, we're going to move on now. And I'm going to get the, um, let me get the chicken out the oven. Mm -hmm. Chicken out of the oven. Oh, I didn't pour my little juice over. <clears throat> so Kareem and I got us a deal right here going on today. It's going to be a really scrump delicious meal. So let's go. Oh, yeah. It is piping hot, y'all. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's pretty. Isn't it beautiful? Those colors just match up so, 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 so well. So what I'm going to do, because I want that flavor go ahead and soak in. I'm going to go ahead and steal me a little bit of juice out of here. This is a, just a little, not a lot. Just a little to pump it up. So I could have really done without the gold mountain, but that's okay. It's okay. <clears throat> that's just a little bit more flavor. And I think, uh, I'm, I am going to do those little potato bowls. They already cooked. All you have to do is pop them in the oven. And let them heat up. Because we're not going to eat right this minute. No, we're not. Okay. That dish, y'all, is ready. It's quick and easy. Y'all saw me do it. 
this is another one. And if you already got the chicken ready, that's one thing. Or you can have you have one go just run by, um, who is it? Not Food Line. I want to say Food Line. Run by um, Sam Club or Food Line does sell uh, rotisserie chicken. <clears throat> but anyway, you can go by either one of those places, get you a rotisserie chicken. And make you that lemon sauce like I told you. Oh man, lemon sauce. I think I have to go back and make sure, but it's a fourth a cup of lemon juice, a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, uh, a stick of butter. I believe that was it pretty much. If not, just go back and check me out. But anyway, I want to make sure I get this. I want that chicken just doused in that juice. So I want all that flavor because I know how that's going to taste with that bread. Uh, mm, that's going to be good. So, everybody, Wednesday's meal is done. We're ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy it here shortly. I'm going to get those potatoes done. So, probably another hour or so before we eat this. Well, even not, what we're going to do is going to be like um, late lunch, early dinner. So, in about an hour or so, it'll be about probably around two-ish. Uh, we'll go ahead and eat this meal. But thank y'all for tuning in with me, uh, for listening to me, for thinking about me, for supporting me, uh, for continuing to uh, give me your feedback in the comments. And most of all, for praying with me. And over the years, we have, what, what is this, second year? We have developed a family, uh, a bond, overeating. You know what? You can do a lot of things when it comes to food. A lot of things. Isn't that a pretty dish? Well, these stir-fried dishes, I'm telling you, there are so many possibilities for stir-fry. And look, when you got leftovers... Hi. You can fix so many things with leftovers, it just becomes countless. So, continue to pray and seek uh, the good things that you can do for the people in your community and throughout the world. Just continue to pray. You know, find a way just uh, to steal away some at some point during the day and send a prayer uh, for your fellow man. Um, Anytime anybody prays for me, I know, I know that the Lord hears them. So we're just going to trust and believe that you're doing the same for people and that you're going to continue on and those prayers are going to continue to be heard. Uh, we can't do this thing by ourselves. We have to have that support. We have to have that extra little push because now is the time to be united uh, on the home front and on the battleground and on the front line because there are those of us who cannot be on the front line. So, I love you guys. I always enjoy being with you all. So, what I'm going to do now is get ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy a little bit of this food in about an hour. And I'm going to be uh, watching TV. Y'all know, look, how many of y'all have just, I have watched so many new TV programs in, these, in this last month. I tell you what, kudos to those networks or whoever it is that's releasing those free movies. You know, if you got HBO, not HBO, if you have, uh, what do you call it, internet. Because I don't have HBO, but I've been able to look at some HBO movies based on the fact that I have internet and I have like Hulu and what I have? I have Hulu and I have uh, Netflix. So Netflix and Hulu features a lot of HBO stuff and they'll get it, they'll release it more and more every day. And I'm sure it's, it's uh, in keeping with what we're going through so that as people are at home, they can look at more things on TV. You remember the, uh, what do they call them, the couch concerts? I've got to figure out how to get to those and uh, find the couch concerts. But, honey, I'm looking at something today called Family Chantel. I don't know how I got roped into that, but I'm there. And what about that Tiger King thing? 
I tried it, y'all, but I, I didn't. I, I got about 10 minutes in, so maybe I'll have to go back and give it another shot. But I have been looking at some tremendous stuff. You know, your 911 and your The Good Doctor and all that stuff. See, I eat that kind of stuff up. I just love it. I always have whenever I was uh, younger and looking at TV. That's the kind of stuff I like. I like a good mystery, a good love. So, look, this was say too many uh, things that I don't like. Now, something. You know what? Profanity is a part of the language. And I can deal with it if it has some contextual value. But when it comes to um, just cursing to be just, I don't know, to fill in lines, I guess. It, to me, it's, it's a little bit ridiculous. I can't watch it. I don't care who's starting or what. And then again, you know, there are some people that curse every word they speak. And you can, I can kind of sort of even see that because that's just the way it's going to be. You know, you're going to hear a conversation from them. But sometimes the, the profanity gets to a point where it's just, now come on. Whoever wrote this, just they were just writing F-bombs. I mean, help me on here. But I love TV. There's not too many genres that I don't uh, enjoy or too many that I want to explore. So... Uh, even if that, you know, there are some friends I've got, they don't even watch TV. I bet you they do now, though. I'm serious. I was surprised that some of the people that never watch TV, they they will read. Some people don't pay that uh, big old cable bill every month. I thought, well, that's smart. But um, they do other things. So I'm, I'm a homebody pretty much. So TV is one of my things. And my children love TV, so... Um, we still do, and I thank God that we have that. Uh, when, we, when we lived over in Spain at one time, well, it wasn't really TV, it was uh, VCRs. They kept us, as far as TV, for four years. So we looked at all kinds of, whatever movies were out, my husband would go out and buy them and, and come home and you know, let the kids play them in our VCR machine. So anyway, I got off on a tangent about that, but I was just thinking, you know, some of the things that we can do as a family while we're still sitting here um, trying to get through what we're trying to get through. I mean, we got we just can't look at the negative side of stuff all the time. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We just got to hang in there until the end of the tunnel comes. So listen, guys, I love y'all. I'm done with this meal. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, don't sleep on those leftovers. Now get them out of there and spruce them up and throw something else with it and you have you a gourmet meal on your hands. So until I cook again, love you guys. Hold on just a minute. You know I had to knock the camera one time. Hold on. Okay, y'all knew what I was talking for. I kept right on talking for a reason. Okay, so I did find my little potato boats. See, they're already made up and they're in a potato shell. They're re-stuffed and got cheese and chives and all that stuff on them. But what I'm going to do to help them out a little bit more, normally I would put extra butter on them. But since we're going lemon chicken today, I'm just going to pour that juice right on top of them. They're frozen, so they have to go into the oven for a while. Probably a good 30 minutes, I imagine, because they're not that big. All that goodness on there. And once I'm just doing this just to give it a little bit of moisture in that inside that pan. And if you know, once they get done, if they need more, I'll give them more. So, meanwhile, I'm gonna put them in a what 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes and check them. And when that happens, we can eat. So, as you can see, we're having restuffed potato boats, some leftover lemon chicken some stir-fried cabbage, asparagus, peppers, and onions. So, until I decide to cook again, y'all, which will probably be sometime later on tomorrow, I'm going to say love you guys. Thank you guys. Keep those prayers going up until the blessings come down reconcile those differences cook some good food invite somebody over well a family member that you can invite over but still just keep that thought going anyway 
and continue to pray without ceasing now so that uh, God will hear us and heal us and he will do just that. He'll do what he said he was going to do. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us even until the end of time. So we have to believe those things in order for them to happen in our lives. We have to be faithful to that. So I love you so, so much. So today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday, and we pray that we live to see another day. And if so, I will see y'all tomorrow. So keep those prayers going up now till the blessings come down. Toodaloo.